Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Verse 101, class is in session Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek I mean these guys making the killer with no competition Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed They cannot be beat, take a seat Watch them do they thing on the MIC Face the feet, they cannot be seen like JC Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree yeah? Hey, this is Magic, part of the Fat Boys with Big Man Jay Wise. This is Jay Wise, and you're listening to Wrestling IQ 101. Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Wrestling IQ 101. When I'm not hosting our podcast, I'm usually at collarandelbowbrand.com. That's right, Collar and Elbow is the only place that combines wrestling with street attire. And I know what you're thinking, I want to look fashionable too, and I also want to save 10%. So head over to collarandelbowbrand.com and use the promo code WIQ101. And look fashionable and save some money. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and you can listen to Wrestling IQ 101 right here on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Wrestling IQ 101. And today, on the phone with me right now, is Ryan Peterson. How's it going, man? Hey, doing good. How are you doing, my man? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's a great day here at Wrestling IQ 101. And uh, so... You know, Ryan, some some people are, are getting familiar with your voice. You're a ring announcer in the independent scene. And um, how did that get started? So it all started about uh, 10 years ago. I went to college upstate New York, mm-hmm. and they had an internet radio, radio station up there. And I've always wanted to try it out, try something different, because I'm also a musician as well. So I might as well somehow get into the entertainment industry. And I love doing it. And on top of that, I've always been a big fan of wrestling, you know, back in the Attitude Era, you know, to the ruthless aggression and so on and so forth. And a couple of friends of mine I went to high school with, they told me that they trained out of this place in Deer Park on Long Island because I lived close there. And at the time, I didn't like Deer Park. I'm thinking, you know, it's WWE because I wasn't really familiar of the indie scene until that year. But it was a place called NYWC, the New York Wrestling Connection. And I went there, you know, first time, loved it, kept going back, you know, as a fan, and then started getting, became friends with some of the people that were there, like, you know, some of the wrestlers, some of the like, upper manager and referees, there was every, everybody. And then I started going to another place out east in Shirley, which is about 45 minutes away, um, called ECPW. They normally run out of Jersey, but back in the day, they used to do shows also here on Long Island. And they did it, like, once every, like, two months at the uh, Shirley Bingo Hall back in the day. And, again, started going there. And as a fan, getting friends, you know, becoming friends with, the, you know, the wrestlers and really, can, really can, you know, making friendships and, uh, really, you know, friend relationships and whatnot. And just like every other, just like everybody else, I all actually wanted to try wrestling myself. I'm going to be flat out honest, after two weeks, I stopped. <laughs> really? Two weeks? Yeah, I, I, two weeks, which I was really surprised. Two weeks. So, um, this is now it's fast forward to 2012, and there was and there was a seminar with Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart at that same place out in out east. And I said to Mr. Hart, Mr. Hart, um, I'm not a wrestler, but I like to partake in you know the matches. Because mm-hmm. whenever someone does a seminar, they always do, like, you know, practice matches in front of them for, like, critique and whatnot. I said, I like to, you know, participate somehow. He said, why don't you try a record of match? I suck. <laughs> I'm going to be flat out honest. Mm-hmm. And so the next match, the, the building had a, P, had a, a PA system, and he said, gave me the mic, and he's like, why don't you try this? And I, op- I opened my mouth and did my normal announcing, like I've always seen on the ABC and whatnot. And... He actually pulled me aside after the seminar saying, son, that is your calling. But he actually pointed the mic and told me, that is your calling. Keep doing it. Keep grinding. Just stick with this. Mm-hmm. And two months later, I officially made my debut with them, with that said company, out in uh, Shirley, Matthew, Shirley, Shirley, New York, in front of 300 people. And the main event was a steel cage. And the funniest part about all of this, I hated public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like when, like whenever you know a teacher calls on you to answer a question. I was always the, I was one of the kids, that one kid that you know didn't want to say anything, especially when they did like the book reports in front of the class. Yeah. I hated reading in front of the class. But so the entire time I was the entire time I was in the locker room area getting ready and whatnot. You know, just nerves running through my head. You know, going over saying, "Okay, I gotta say it like this, say it like that, say it like this." But then once they said, "Okay, we're starting up," and the music hit, and I went through the curtain, it was like everything just like by the snap of a finger just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Like my nerves were gone. It's like the adrenaline rush, and and yeah, that's that was my official debut with them back eight years ago. Actually, eight and a half years ago. So, so this is crazy. You're a shy kid, but you love playing music, and somehow. You think wrestling, and then all of a sudden, turn into a ring announcer. This is a crazy story. I mean, this is pretty cool. No, it's a weird transition. But <laughs> as you know, but as you know, I learned like you know, yeah, like every single time, like year after year, uh-huh. technically, it is some form of entertainment, which mm-hmm. is something I've always want, always done, and always still want to do is entertain the public in some way, shape, or form. And obviously, obviously, announcing is doing well for me. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, and you could see that. I mean, you're partic- you're participating in so many uh, independent places uh, as of late, like WrestlePro, Pro, uh, Titans uh, Championship Wrestling. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy to see where you've gone in uh, in, in all this time. And actually, I, I will be uh, debuting for a new company mm-hmm. uh, that just started up called Invictus Pro Wrestling as well. So that's another uh, that's another one on my resume. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty impressive resume. So let me ask you this, man. Um, you you have the moniker the man child. What is that? <laughs> I haven't heard that name in like years. So this actually started by one of my friends. This is like one of my friends who uh, I used to go to shows with all the time, and that's how. And he and he was just like this big biker dude and whatnot. Uh-huh. And that was like the first thing he thought. I was like man child. I'm like oh god. And then for the last for like five years, it kind of like stuck to me until I decided, okay, no more, no more of this stuff. Because the, the moment that I decided to stop that moniker mm-hmm. was the moment that I actually got the opportunity to start announcing MMA and kickboxing events as well. So I do multiple sports besides wrestling. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, I so are you an avid fan of UFC? In uh, MMA, I am from time to time. Um, uh-huh. Obviously, obviously it would be. I don't know when this will air, but you know the big beat fight that happened this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was at Wrestle, I was at a Wrestle Pro doing the Dream Sixteen, yeah. and um, with and actually I think it was a few people that actually had the fight on their phone because it was an earlier start time. So we we're just sitting there watching the watching the bout and whatnot, and watching the beat. Um, to the uh, triangle choke in the first round, but I've always, but I've always, you know, enjoyed, you know, I mean, am I like a hardcore fan, like knowing all the fighters off the top of my head? No, mm-hmm. absolutely not. I mean, obviously, you know, the main ones like Conor McGregor, uh, Nate Diaz, uh, Randy Couture. The list goes on and on. But like those big, those big like marketable names, like you know, the minor undercard names. Not really, but you know, as I watch it, I just love watching. I just love watching, you know, just combat sports in general. Hmm. So, so growing up, did you have a favorite wrestler? Were you watching it? Uh, you, know, you allude that you were watching it during the Attitude Era, but uh, were you watching it, um, you know, afterwards? And did you have a favorite? So, uh, you know, it's funny. Like my first, my first time ever going to an event live in person was SummerSlam two thousand two. Okay. And obviously, everyone knows that was one of. They're claiming that to be like the best SummerSlam card of all time. And I think around that time, well, I think Kurt Angle was one of my favorites. Kurt Angle, it was a mix of like three different people. It was Kurt Angle, uh, Undertaker, and and uh, Triple H at the time. Those were like mm-hmm. my, those were like top three. You know, it's funny. I thought you were gonna say Virgil, but. Uh, those are not bad people to pick. Wait, who's your thought I was going to say? I thought you were going to say wrestling superstar Virgil. Uh, oh, well, that's, that was before my time, so... Oh, okay. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, so, you know, and it's kind of crazy. So, before 
before you alluded that you played um that you love playing music what's your favorite instrument to play uh do you can you play multiple um uh, i actually do play, i actually do play multiple i played uh i play uh drums a little bit of guitar vocals just a little bit not as much as i used to mm-hmm. but my main instrument and i know this is gonna sound kind of geeky but i've always loved it back in the since i was fourth grade i think uh-huh. uh jazz trombone oh pretty cool man yeah, a, again, another weird, you know, transition from you know, that to drums. But, you know, I've, I've played that for so many years. Hey, uh, have you ever seen the movie Anchorman? Oh, absolutely. When he plays the jazz flute? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I don't think it would be that good, but, uh-huh. but you don't see me climbing on top of the bar stools and walking around the bars and, and heck, even with the... Uh, the trombone play. You don't see me, uh, if you remember the movie, him, you know, just stepping up a drink and yeah. just lighting that on fire, like mid, mid-blow. No, I don't do that. Sure, milk was a bad choice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what are some things that people would be surprised that you like or, or, that, or that you do? So, I've always been a fan of this for so long. Uh-huh. Like, actually, as long as I can remember, but... Uh, obviously, you know, besides, you know, MMA and boxing and wrestling and all that stuff, and even, like, regular sports, I love musical theater, like Broadway musicals. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You have a favorite show in particular? Uh, I actually have a couple of them, to be honest. A couple of them, and actually both of them I saw with my, uh, mother. Actually, yeah, both of them with my mother. And... My first show ever with her was The Lion King. Uh-huh. This was back in like the early 2000s. And then uh, the other one was uh, the last musical that we saw together, which was also another Disney one, but this one was Aladdin. And that was six years ago. That was the last, that was the last musical that we saw together. Hmm. Pretty cool. So have you seen Hamilton? I... Well, I mean, that was on Disney Plus, and oh. it's on my list, but I haven't been able to watch it yet. <laughs> you haven't been able to watch Hamilton? <laughs> I, I haven't been home because I've been busy doing shows. Hello. Oh, <laughs> man. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, I have it on my list. It's on my playlist. <laughs> I, I'm going to give everybody some inside information, but my girlfriend, she's obsessed with like musicals, too, and she loves Hamilton. So on the ride down to wrestling, we listen to Hamilton. And I'm like... I, I've heard the soundtrack. The soundtrack is phenomenal. I know that for a fact. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I'm like in the mood. I'm like, uh, you know, I have, you know, I have my playlist that I like to listen to when I'm heading down for wrestling. And a lot of this, some Backstreet Boys and some NSYNC. And she's throwing me <laughs> off with some Hamilton here. I'm like, but it's good. I mean, it's absolutely amazing, the soundtrack. Absolutely. So, yeah. But, that's, like the one, that's the one thing, that's the one thing that like a lot of people don't know. And uh, that's, is that uh, I'm a big like musical geek. Damn. As they call it. So, so, is there a certain style that you like to play, or can, or do you just have to be in a mood for something? So, whenever I get, whenever I'm like going to shows and whatnot, I have like a certain playlist off of my uh, my Apple Play. It's uh-huh. kind of like a mix of like different like rock songs, you know, like good, you know, pump me up songs. I got a little, so I got a little bit of uh, Creed in there. I have uh, Alter Bridge. I, oh yeah, I'm looking at the list right now as I speak. Uh, Alter Bridge, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, Dan Wolves. Uh, also got some, oh, I'm interested in one, some like classic Bon Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. like the like the eighty stuff, like the Slippery One Wet album. Uh, also got some Code Orange in there, Cody and Cambria. Pretty much anything just to, you know, get me in the mood. Like, okay, I'm heading to a show. It's time to get pumped up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You've also been able to do some stuff with Impact Wrestling. How was that experience? Oh, uh, it was amazing, I'll tell you that. So, I'll tell you a quick story how I got into that. Uh-huh. It was WrestleMania weekend last year, and... I was actually working security for Game Changer Wrestling when they did Bloodsport in Jersey City. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there doing security, and I get a call from Pat Buck um, saying, 
say, hey, by any chance, there is any area, uh, impact needs an announcer tonight. I'm like, this is at 4 o'clock mm-hmm. on that same day. I'm like, you're lucky I'm in Jersey City right now. <laughs> and, of course, the number one rule that I've always learned in this business, is, and especially for up-and-coming, you know, talent wrestlers, announcers, referees, whatnot, always bring your gear because you never know what to expect. Sure, absolutely, and that's yeah, that's for anybody, right? Because you, you cannot oh, yeah. even be on the show, and there you are. So, um, well, let me ask you this, man. Uh, you know, as of late, I mean, you've been around David Adams and Larry Legend. Um, have you guys uh, traded advice of the trade? So it's funny that you mentioned that. When I first started announcing, uh, Larry Legend was the one that kind of helped me mold my announcing into what it is today. He helped me with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with David, with David Adams, yeah. the thing is, we never really like saw each other much, even though we were doing this for the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. But July, but back in July at American Spirit with TCW, that was the first time we ever worked together. Wow! In not in eight and a half nine years, that was the first time we finally worked together. It's pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> Small world. Yeah. Um. So when when you get in the ring and stuff like that, do you do you try to listen to like the the wrestler songs? Like David Adams, he said to once to once, uh, he'll listen to the songs on on his ride home from work, and he'll ring announce and try to find the beat where you know where the wrestlers get in the ring and stuff like that to say the name. Uh, do you have your own method or about doing it? Um, uh, I guess just basically. I'm assuming you mean like you know when I'm introducing the wrestlers when they come out. The yeah. Person, is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, basically what? Basically, I think it's kind of like the same style. Like him, you know, coming like when right when I see them, like coming out of the curtain, that's when I know to introduce them. Uh huh. Unless unless it's something like a special match, like an idol match, or a very specific like main event match and whatnot, mm. then. It's, then both of them, then both competitors would be in the ring. It'll be, as they call it, a uh, Japanese style entrance, a Japanese title style entrance, as they call it. Okay. So, you know, do you have a favorite memory or favorite moment that you've been able to have um, since you've been ring announcing? Uh, I mean, I have so I have so many, but like the first, the first two I could think of on top of my head uh-huh. was definitely with Impact because. Not only did I did the WrestleMania show that weekend, I don't know if you remember that massive one that they had in the rec center. Yeah. Yeah, that was me that announced the show at 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> which I don't know how I still had energy to do that. Um, but then I was I got lucky enough to work uh, two sets of tapings, uh, one in June and one in November. And the one in June, they had a partnership going on with House of Hardcore. Mm-hmm. And I remember after the Friday night taping. Uh, Tommy Dreamer comes up to me and he says, are you doing anything Sunday? I'm like, no, why? He says, you are now. You're working my House of Hardcore show on Sunday. So I'm like, okay. So that got me in with House of Hardcore on that weekend. And my other memory is just recently, just going to Alaska with WrestlePro. Hmm. That's pretty cool. How was that? Oh, uh, I want to go back. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my honest answer I want to go back it's like it's like a whole completely different world out there compared to the tri-state area I'll tell you that really is it like laid back and stuff like that oh absolutely it's more laid back the funny thing about this trip this past trip was we didn't know what to expect because of the whole COVID-19 uh, situation that's going on around the, around the globe sure. and one of the key things was we didn't know how the crowds would draw because we had two shows set in two, two different cities. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the far, and the first one, that Friday night, was it, we had about 400 people in the crowd, which I was really surprised. And, it was, and what made the show even better and more comfortable for me was not only was it wrestling, but we also had a couple of uh, kickboxing and boxing matches. So it was a mix of all three, which I felt comfortable doing because that's mainly my... Uh, my main ground. And then the next one, the next day, we were in Palmer. And that one was like, you know, the main big show. This was the one that got pushed back from May in Anchorage to September in Anchorage to September in Wasilla or Palmer. 
And there were so many, they had to go through so many obstacles with changing dates, changing venues. And again, um, the, prom the promoter, I was going to say Kevin Matthews, uh, he didn't know what to expect crowd wise. We had about 350 people in there, and that's how much that building could hold. And we were shocked, like, wow, we did not expect that at all. And the best part about this is that you can actually watch the event on, on the WrestlePro Alaska page, because we streamed the event live. And within the, fir within the first 24 hours, we had about 19,000 people from around the world watching. And... Uh, I believe it was, uh, I forgot, I forgot the name of the, uh, re the magazine it was, but one of the, but a top, uh, Wrestling Observer magazine, mm. not the Wrestling Observer, but another name, actually reviewed our event and said that our event is one of the top events to watch in 2020, which is huge for something in indie wrestling. Yeah, it is actually pretty incredible, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, absolutely. Um, where has wrestling taken you that you were kind of surprised other than Alaska? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of that. That's a good question. Um, well, obviously besides, you know, the last frontier, as they called it, as they call Alaska. Yeah. Um, I, hmm. To be honest, I really, uh, well, you stoked me on this one because I've because I don't think there's really have I don't like, I really don't think there has been like any like weird or like unusual places. Actually, nope. Sorry, correct that. Yeah, a front yard of someone's house. Really? Yep. <laughs> wow. But there, but there's a good reason for this one too. Uh -huh. So this was back in I think my during my first or second year of announcing, mm -hmm. and. This was actually a this was actually a party show a party show for the I don't know if he's still the guy anymore but he was the head of the Long Island Special Olympics and he invited us to go do this show as he brings in like all the champions and the family it was like a huge champion like barbecue they did mm -hmm. but it was just but it was weird the location do you think they put us in the backyard or whatnot. No, they put us in the front yard of the house, and the front yard was kind of slanted a little bit. So it was like, great. So if anyone tries to take a dive, you might end up in the middle of the street. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> wow. But luckily no uh, one did, right? Well, luckily nobody did. No, 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 okay, no. Or, okay, else, <laughs> or else uh, we would have heard that story all over the news. Uh, but, okay. you know, I've done, the, I've, I've done the simple, you know, like festival... Um, especially the taco, especially the taco festival in uh, in uh, Sussex County. Oh my god, that was a lot of fun. It was what uh -huh. we pulled up like a lucha libre style event. It was uh -huh. a lot of fun. That's but you know, just simple like uh, fall festivals, uh, UFC, uh, VFW halls. I've basically done it all. Even uh, cow even like college arenas. Wow, really? That's pretty even, cool. And even uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm sorry to I apologize for that. But even a couple of big arenas like the. Uh, Westchester County Center up in uh, White Plains, New York, where WWE does house shows, or mm -hmm. did house shows, I don't know if they do anymore. And uh, the Mohegan Sun Arena up at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, you know, from somebody's house to the big stage of Mohegan Sun. I mean, that's pretty impressive, man. That's a pretty cool resume to have uh, on the list. Um, and you can see that the the hard work is paying off, uh, you know, you're... you're doing your thing man it's cool to see you doing your grind uh you have like a favorite movie or a favorite show that uh people would be kind of surprised about um honestly like just like one of my favorite shows i'm actually i've actually been binge watching is uh the office that's just like my, my main thing the office oh yeah the <laughs> office i love that show for sure <laughs> you what's even funnier is that i uh I actually work a regular job during the week. I work for a mortgage company. Uh -huh. And uh, every time I watch The Office, I'm thinking to myself, okay, who in my office is this person? Who is that? Who is this? Who is that? Yeah. Uh, who, who's your favorite on The Office? you like Angela or Michael or, or Kevin? Oh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely more of a Jim Halpert type of guy. Oh, nice. Very yeah, nice. that's like my... It was even funny. I think uh, me and him have the same like, characteristics. 
and what and whatnot. Oh yeah, what, what do you have uh, in common with Jim? No, we're just both like laid back people. Sometimes we pull practical jokes here, here or there, but we're just mostly just laid back as you could, as you see them just being like just chill. That's awesome. That is completely awesome to hear. Uh, I, I, I ain't no I ain't no Dwight Schrute. I'll tell you that. No, yeah. Oh, I mean, Dwight's not that bad of a guy. He's he's a nice guy. <laughs> well, I mean, he's a little a little odd around the edges, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I like um, I love Michael Scott, and my my favorite episode is uh, Prison Mike, <laughs> <laughs> the convict. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I remember that one. And he's like, I never got caught either, and they're like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I like those, like, stupid little humors where, like, it's so serious that then you're like, wait, that was a joke. <laughs> so, I agree with you with The Office. It's, uh, it's one of the best. What, one of my favorite episodes was, uh, the one, the one where they were practicing CPR. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he cuts the doll's and, face off? Yep. And he oh. starts wearing it, like, face off, like, Gary. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or right before that, they're like singing "Staying Alive," and they're all singing it in the office. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're all singing it. They're all singing it. Kelly's doing like background dancing to yeah. it. it's so stupid, but it's so funny. And uh, again, as I'm watching it, I'm thinking to myself, okay, who in my office would actually do that stuff? Yeah, yeah, you got like. We go up there. You gotta tell me who or who do you compare these people to? But this is hilarious that that you actually do this. <laughs> Um, well, well, especially like nowadays, where especially nowadays where I can still go into the office, but there's only like ten of us in the office, and I'm, I'll be like sitting there sometimes going, "Okay, what can I do? What do I do?" Oh, just like really like work my brain so I won't be like you know they say mush if it's not too busy. Yeah. So, uh, have you had the office Olympics in your office yet, or no? No, uh, no, we never. No, we. Ha- that's not a bad idea though for the holidays coming up. <laughs> ten of us in there. Or a boo- uh, uh, booze cruise or something like that? <laughs> uh, not, not a booze cruise, but uh, we did have holiday parties. Oh, nice. And the holiday parties, you know, was open bar. So oh, it's okay. kind of the thing of a booze cruise, except no running water. Oh, wow, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> wow. Um, so let me ask you this. You know, there, there's so many things that you can go down and do down the road. Um, where do you where do you want to be in a couple of years when 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 your ring announcing is all the set and done? Do you still want to do commentating? Do you still want to do announcing? Do you want to, you know? Do you want to give back to the wrestling business? Oh, I still, oh, I still definitely want to announce. But that's that's never going away. Uh-huh. I th- there was you know a brief period uh, this year where I was like contemplating on walking away, but that's because I was in a really dark place. Mm-hmm. Um. Just to, just to break it down, just to like give you a little synopsis, uh, WrestleMania weekend this past year, mm-hmm. I uh, unfortunately lost my mother awesome. at a very young age, and right when she and right when she passed, that's when you know I had like demons going through my head and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, and there was like you know times kind of things like should I retire, like should I you know quote unquote retire from announcing hang up the suit, walk away from the business in its entirety and whatnot. I mean, I was very, very close until uh, Billy Fetke, a Titan Championship wrestling, called me in June, asking me asked me to be a part of Titan. Mm-hmm. So basically, Billy, well, Billy Fetke and everyone at Titan are the, as they quote unquote, the fire, the fire on the, the fire that would blow myself, blow, you know, I, I don't know how the right... The fire under my butt. How does that sound? Yeah. That's the correct term. Yeah, they let that passion back, right? Exactly. And because of that, I got to work with uh, WrestlePro. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've always worked with WrestlePro, mm. but more so career pro in New York. Mm. Because uh, another colleague of mine, uh, Dave Sergio, does WrestlePro. But uh, lately, he's been doing so much, you know, very, uh, obviously positive stuff with uh, he's. Uh, He's a blog writer for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he just had a kid. He's got a lot of like positive things going on. It's like it's it'll, it'll be like too much. So mm-hmm. uh, he asked me to 
you know, stepped in for a couple of, show, a couple of shows, and I said, sure, no problem. And then, you know, after the foreseeable future, I'm, you know, you know, taking, uh, I'm the lead announcer over at, at WrestlePro, which is, which is also huge, because WrestlePro has a really good reputation of bringing on quality matches and also quality talent. Yeah, they yeah they do. I mean, I mean, the Sweet Sixteen uh, that they put on this past weekend. I mean, you, you can't get any better than that uh, for an indie show, right? Oh no, absolutely not. This is their second installment, and it was uh, well, not to do any spoilers, but uh, Bobby mm-hmm. Wayward won the uh, tournament, mm-hmm. and in the finals, it was him against Brian Pillman Jr. Wow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, but we also had uh, Richard Holiday on there. Uh, we also had uh, Big Bacon Brad Hollister from the uh, New England area. Mm-hmm. You know, what's... I, I'm sorry. I, don't know if I said Richard. I think I did say Richard Holiday. Yeah, I'm assuming I did. Uh, we had Gangrel on the show. We had Nat Caster, T.J. Crawford, LSG, Ken Dixon from the Ring of Honor Dojo. We had so many names in this uh, Dream 16 tournament. This year, it's uh, it was incredible. Yeah, and it's crazy because it only really starts at like twenty bucks, right? And so for twenty bucks, you're seeing some of the best wrestlers in the world, some of the greatest legends in the world. And the same thing about TCW. I mean, they have goddesses of uh, goddesses of war and 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 Titan uh, Titan Championship Wrestling. And I mean, the amount of stars they're bringing into those shows and and future uh, future stars. I mean, it's crazy. And I'm, I'm grateful that I'm work, that I'll be able to work with uh, Titan, Titan Slash Goddesses, and also uh, Russell Pro because, that, because like you said, for like tw- at least twenty twenty bucks, you're seeing, you know, basically the, the past, present, and future stars of yeah. the wrestling uh, industry. Yeah, a well-rounded group of uh, of rosters uh, for sure. Um. Who was your favorite person to announce? On the NBC? Yeah. Oh, I have a couple of them. So mm-hmm. one of them off the top of my head, which I actually got to which I actually got to work with again this past weekend and working in with working with him again during uh actually in a few weeks with uh Titan Championship Wrestling. Uh the Messiah of Old School, Sean Donovan. Yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. And uh I'm trying, to th- I'm trying to think who else off the top of my head. Well, wait, while you're thinking, while you're in the ring with Sean Donovan, you have to be careful because he gets the fans going. People, people are trying to get into the ring to attack him because he's so mean. <laughs> oh, especially, especially if one guy, especially if one certain individual decides to take off his sweatshirt and say, you know, surf and turf, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good comeback i guess but sean donovan i mean he lays them in i mean he lays in all the insults and it's crazy to see uh so you gotta be careful man i mean i'm sure you've had past situations with other people um oh absolutely yeah and, but, and also one one other thing that you know a lot of people don't realize that when it comes to when it's sean donovan in the ring and he has that towel he whips you with that towel Oh yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a bully, and he's you know antagonizing the fans. You're like, what the hell? I don't well, envy you. Well, that's why he's the Messiah of old school because his style is the is the old school style of wrestling. Absolutely. And speaking of uh, like old school style of wrestling, there's another individual. I don't know if you're familiar with this, mm-hmm. but uh, the gentleman by the name of the Greek God Papadon. Oh, of course. And yeah. Papa Don, I have known for actually 10 years. I've actually known him when I first started being a fan at that place, uh, NYWC, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And he's one of my, he's one of my favorites you know, to work with because obviously with his character being, you know, the heat, you know, the, the basic, you know, bad guy, you know, hold the robe, take off my robe and all that stuff. We, we have that, we have that, you know, it's mm-hmm. weird to describe it, but we, we have that good uh, chemistry together. Like, you know, we work off each other well. That's pretty awesome, man. Um, what was some of the best advice you've been given in wrestling? Uh, when it comes to... Mm-hmm. When it comes to uh, announcing, yeah. don't uh, walk around the ring while you're announcing. Okay. 
that that was the first that was literally like my number one issue that I had for the first year. I kept like walking around the not staying in the same not staying in the same spot like you know mostly all announcers do, but it was always like you know just you know like me walking from corner to corner to that. It was just like I was all over the place, and you know they and they told me. And uh, some people told me to stop and slow down. I mean, you know, stop, you know, stay still, breathe. Mm-hmm. I actually learned that uh, when I when I first started working with uh, H Pro Wrestling in Jersey, because there, I I pretty much consider that place my uh, training ground. Like they they taught me you know the proper way I had to you know face the quote unquote the main camera, the hard cam, uh, where to stand, how to dictate. Uh, make sure to make sure to not talk over the announcer, the commentating team when you're announcing. It's just like little tiny tips that are good, that are good like TV quality. Hmm. And what's actually even funnier uh, earlier, you said, you know, do I want to give? Do I feel like I want to give back to the give back? Absolutely. I've actually in the last year and a half or so, I've actually help like up and coming you know people that want to try like announcing or uh commentating like giving them adv- giving them advice you know how to say this you know how to say that just like really like giving them you know advice and it's and to me it feels weird because i've been do- like i said i've been doing this for about eight and a half years and i never thought i'd be at you know that level where i you know give advice where I might be giving advice level because I didn't feel like I actually like quali- not qualified for that moniker, but I guess when it comes to like up and coming commentators and whatnot, like this past weekend at a uh, Ruffle Pro, mm-hmm. there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Jordan Lucia Jordan Luciano. He was a former wrestler. I know him for years, but he recently got into commentating, and he was asking me, you know, and he was debuting with Ruffle Pro that weekend, so he mm-hmm. was asking me, um. Do you, like, do you have any notes for this guy? Like, do you have any like, specific notes for this guy or that guy or this guy? Like, uh, for example, there was a... I don't know if you follow WrestlePro at all. Yeah, of course. Uh, lately, but there's been a whole feud with uh, Dion Rusman and Anthony Bowens with the whole thing with the WrestlePro gold situation. I don't know if you're mm-hmm. familiar with that. Yeah. Okay. So, this weekend, they were those two were putting, like, tag matches to help really build up the story. And, of course... Spoiler alert, they both lost their matches due to someone on someone on their team, uh, you know, messing it up for them and really, like, building up their match because they're supposed to have, because they're going to have their match supposedly in Alaska in April. Mm. But they were, like, building up and whatnot, and the, guy, and the gentleman on commentary was asking, like, okay, so what's the key note on, you know, Dion, with, why, is he the, you know, why is the interim gold champion? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, and explain and explain. I've told him to explain to the people at home the reason why he's the interim world champion because the last event. You know, just like really key notes like of what happened at the past event. That way, the the viewers at home can really like pay attention as to like okay, so that's why there's a little bit of up, like a little bit of uh, upmanship between these two. Yeah, it's like little key things like that. Um, and same thing with the uh, LS. Same thing with like. Someone like LSG who competed in the first ever ladder match, the first ever dog collar. It's like really key like factors that would make the crowd go, oh, okay. That's well, well, not, well, they not only see that certain wrestler more, but also makes you know see the product more. Saying, wait, he's a mainstay of WrestlePro. Oh, I want to come back to WrestlePro more often. It's like little tiny tidbits sure. of uh, just like that. And it's, like I said, it felt weird giving the advice at the same time. I'm grateful that they asked me for advice mm-hmm. because I've been, I've been through it all. I've seen it all. I've done it all in less than 10 years. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know, Ryan, we're, you know, we really want to thank you for taking out the time and talking with us. Um, where can people get you on social media if they want to connect with you? So you, can, so you guys can get me on Instagram at WrestlingMC. Very, very simple, very basic. Uh, on Twitter, which I actually just changed the name recently. I will pull it up in one second. Uh, then you can find me at, at Ryan underscore MC92 mm-hmm. on Twitter. And just uh, Ryan Peterson on Facebook. That simple. Awesome, man. 
Well, Ryan, you know, we thank you again for taking out the time and talking with us here at Wrestling IQ 101. And uh, for us, this has been Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we'll see you guys pretty soon.